Hello, this is Leslie. Welcome to my new channel. I'm mainly interested in street photography and I wanted to make about 20 videos or so uh, sharing some of my photos and talking about some of the equipment I use. In today's video, I wanted to quickly talk about uh, three lenses that I've found for street photography. They are three pancake lenses. They're not that widely known just because they're not uh, Nikon or Canon. So yeah, I made some pancakes and well actually these are called pikelets in English if you're a foreigner they're actually it should actually be called pikelet like a pikelet lens would be more appropriate because pikelets are small pancakes so anyway without further ado so the first pancake lens I bought for my Nikon camera is this one it's a Voigtlander color Scopa 28 millimeter and uh, I really like this lens it's manual focus it's quite short I'll show you compared to the 35 millimeter f2 so 35 millimeter f2 is on your left so it's a it's at least a centimeter or probably even one and a half centimeters shorter than than the Nikon equivalent this is, uh, I think, 42 millimeter equivalent with um, DX crop sensors. So uh, it's kind of middle for for a for a crop sensor camera. It's kind of um, an ideal focal length. The next one I bought was the 20 millimeter version. I really like that lens, um, that 28 millimeter, I, and I thought the quality was really good. And I was a bit worried in the beginning about the manual focus, but that didn't turn out to be such a big deal. So uh, the next lens I bought was in the series was this um, 20 millimeter one. 20 millimeter. I think it's also called Color Scopa. Let's just wait till it focuses. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't want to focus. 20 millimeter scope are. Now I was a little bit worried in the beginning because I saw this review that uh, was soft on the edges and all this sort of thing. But this has turned out to be one of my favorite lenses on DX anyway. We'll see how I haven't got a digital FX camera yet. So I'll see what it um, turns out like. But I'll put up a few photos with this lens that I've taken with this lens on DX. So I'll put those up now and you can have a look at them. Okay, so I like it because it's really small and on uh, on the on my on my camera which is a D3300 it's just a base model camera this is equivalent to 30 millimeters focal length so it's kind of wide angle very similar to 28 in between 28 and 35 millimeters on on the full frame camera so I found this focal length probably even better than the 28 millimeter and I found the quality good enough plenty good enough you know because most of if you look at my photographs if you look at my website most of my photographs are blurry anyway and some of them are sharp but anyway I think it's important to look at the images that you get with the lens and not just pixel people whatever they call it and look at brick walls and all those sort of test charts I'm not that sort of a photographer although I I, I, I did read a lot of reviews about these lenses from lens reviewers but I noticed that a lot of photos from those lens reviewers aren't very good like the optical if you look at the photographs taken with the optical limits uh, review site they're not very good so anyway and then I was so happy with those two lenses, I ended up buying the third and last uh, lens in the series. It's still a pancake lens. It's the Ultron, 40mm Ultron. And um, I've this comes with a close-up lens as well. I, I've got it w with an extra 
um, without all the paraphernalia attached, it's it's only that big, right? So that's a very shallow lens. Now I'll I'll show you the 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 thirty five millimeter as as a comparison. Thirty five millimeter, right? <sighs> Sorry, I can't see what I'm doing with the lenses in the way. It's actually almost half the, uh, and that's focused all the way out. They're both focused all the way um, to infinity, I think. Or is it the other way around? No, to infinity. So, um, they're really short. And, you know, you might ask, well, why is that so such such a big deal? Well, because when you're doing street photography, you know, People, if they're looking at the lens, they can't really tell if it's pointing at them or not. Like if you, if you, if you, you if you just quickly glancing at this, you can't really see where I'm pointing it. At. But if you, if you take a big long lens like this, this one, you can see. If I had touched this to the camera, you could see if I'm pointing it right at you. So these short lenses are very discreet. I found, and I found myself capturing images of people that hadn't, that didn't even know they'd been photographed. Now, because it's the last lens I bought of the series, I haven't actually used it that much, this 40mm Ultron. Um, and I tend to do my product photography with the 50mm lens, Nikon lens. So, I haven't used it that much, but I'm looking forward to using it, especially on the full frame, because... This is kind of like a very normal, ideal field of view that's not too wide and not too um, tight. So this also comes with a close-up adapter and a little lens hood. Now the thing I don't, the only thing I don't like about this lens is this this uh, lens cap here, this small little lens cap. It has a tendency to come off. It's not very. It's not very, uh, it's not held on very tightly and you can't buy a Nikon one that small. So I tend to, I tend to just pull it off and then when I put it back on, I, I sort of screw it on a bit, make it a bit tighter. This also comes with a lens hood. We'll get the close up lens off. So that's what it looks like with the lens hood. And I've also got, to give a bit more, uh, I'm going to try this, to give a bit more, uh, what do you call that, vignetting on purpose, I've put a, a extra layer on there, like a, an extra filter. It's just got, it's got no glass in it, but just to, uh, I'm going to try and get an effect, a vignetting effect, without putting it through the post-processing. So there, the Voigtlander series Scopar, Color Scopar, 28mm, 20mm, Ultron, 40mm. I'm pretty sure they're the smallest, they might not be the lightest, I think the, the 50mm 1.8 is, is one of the lightest lenses out there, that's still good quality. But they're definitely some of the smallest lenses for Nikon. And the good thing is they do have a chip. You do get the focusing confirmation thing, the arrows when you're focusing. I, do, I found that it's very easy to focus the 28 and 20. The 40, I think, is a little bit harder. The, the, the longer focal length you go, the harder to nail the focus. But often you can just um, zone focus. So that's where you... That's what I did a lot of the time. I'll just put the lens caps on so they don't get dirty. Uh, so say, say with this 28 millimeter, if you put it to F8, um, where are we? If you put it to F8, it, it shows you on there that if you if your subject's one and a half meters away, then pretty much everything between one meter and three meters is going to be in focus. So, a lot of my photo, uh, the other things I like about these lenses is they stop down to f22. And there's been, uh, every, every reviewer that I have read has mentioned how 
you get more diffraction at f16 and f22 and smaller and they always mention it but some of my best photos have been taken at f22 right because i shoot directly into the sun to get extra lighting and to get to i, I have this overblown highlight sort of thing so i'm shooting directly into the sun and often it's either 50, f16 or f22 you know and also you get more depth of field so you're more likely to nail the photo so if you if you put it to f22 uh and your subject is uh let's say say it's one and a half meters away say your subject is one and a half meters away well maybe that's a bit, a bit too close if it's say two meters away everything from uh one meter to infinity is in focus like you just you get much more depth of field right so you might think well manual focusing sucks but actually if you if you play it to your advantage you you don't even need to focus you can just uh drop the aperture down a bit and then use your little scale here to work out what's going to be in focus or not so that's what i often did and uh and just um see with the rico cameras that's called snap focus you have this you have it here in this lens you just set the thing that's what i like about these lenses you've got the you've got the um the scale there in the middle there where are we it's very hard to do this because this is reversed so you know some lenses don't have that scale i think the the 35 millimeter dx lens nikon doesn't have that scale so i sold that lens i mean the other thing is they use a these all these voigtlanders use um 52 millimeter filter thread that's compatible with the afd lenses which i'll talk about in another video which are autofocus and i generally find that very handy so that means you know this lens hood you could put on the the 28 or the 40 and you could probably put on the this close-up lens as well onto those anyway i really like the image quality i like the construction i don't like the new lenses as much as these old ones i the new ones have this silver ring around them like a, a retro thing i don't like that as much i prefer these all black ones the you know exquisitely made um it says here lens made in japan so although it sounds german it's actually made in japan let's have a look at the others if they're made in japan made in japan made in japan so that's nice to see they are quite expensive but i think you know i think they will last at least 20 years you know they'll last until i'm retired so um i see them as a bit of an investment i don't think i'll be selling them um i'm really looking forward to seeing how the 40 and the 20 millimeters go on the on the uh, full frame although i kind of already know that the 40 will be good i'm wor a bit worried about the 20 but uh yeah okay there is also another e-series lens i think uh which is pancake style thing but it's all plastic and i don't think the quality is as good and there's also a a, a 45 millimeter nickel lens which is gn and that is a kind of a pancake lens as well but i think i'm very happy with those so i they're my go-to street photography lenses at the moment i do also have some other lenses for lower light stuff and wide super wide angle and all this sort of thing 
but I think I've captured some really nice photos with these set and I like they do flare a little bit which I kind of like that effect in them um, they I think it adds to the photos so mm, what do you think you know I, I read somewhere I think it was Ken Rockwell's site you know he said that you should invest in lenses not the bodies so that's what I tried to do because lenses tend to go up in value if anything and the bodies go down in value so I don't even have a full frame digital camera I have a f100 film camera so that's the other thing about this channel I will be developing some film and I'll explain why I'm interested in film as well so yeah, yeah anyway they're probably my favorite set of lenses they're very small I tend to just take two or three of them with me one on the camera maybe one in each pocket and sometimes just two sometimes I just take two so if I'm taking the 28 I might take the 40 if I'm taking the 28 I might take the 20 and you know I wouldn't take for example the 28 and the 35 because they're with the with the Nikon 35 too close so and I wouldn't take the 24 or 24 with a 20 or a 28 so I tend to just um, take a bit of a, a have a gap and take two uh, and that's how I do it yeah so I'm not disappointed in any way and I met my expectations uh, but the thing is if you are one of those people that's going to look at the images and be wondering oh is this good enough quality then you know with if you if you buy smaller lenses you've got to make some sort of sacrifices somewhere either you have to pay more or more likely the quality is not going to be as good as some sort of big sigma art lens or whatever they have these days i'm not into the big lenses at all maybe um in future anyway i'm starting to ramble so i'll leave it there Thanks for watching. Um, see you next time in the next video. Thank you. Bye.